week, we have Mark Abraham on how I came up. Hello everyone, I'm Sam Hill, the career change guru. And this week, we're going to share Mark's story from Haiti to Miami to being a college football player and then now an educational consultant. Now, let's get to it. This is how I came up. Well, my name is Dr. Mark Abraham. Originally, I'm from Miami, Florida, but I currently reside in Buffalo, New York. My childhood, you know, I grew up in, um, my family's originally from Haiti, so I'm first generation American. Was born in Miami Gardens, Carroll City area. Shout out to 305. Um, moved from uh, Miami area to Broward County. Uh, played football at uh, Deerfield Beach High School. And I was fortunate enough to earn a Division One scholarship to play at the University of Buffalo. Um, single parent mom, um, you know, we grew up in poverty, um, had the, all of the, 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 the trappings or the fixings to be a, stat a statistic, but thank God for mentors and right uh, educational systems that allowed me to now be the man that I am now, which is a doctor and a leader in the community. One of the things I think that uh, was one of my biggest struggles was literacy um, and a feeling of inadequacy. Um, I always tell this story when I was young, I had a stepdad um, at the time who would call me dumb and stupid so much. I thought it was part of my name. And um, I really adopted the, uh, the Ebonics culture. So I could read, but I didn't read often. And consequently, I could not write. So when I got to the University of Buffalo, I had a 1.4 GPA in college. And it was so difficult for me to articulate myself on paper. And so I literally had to, by the grace of God, teach myself how to read. I would um, read and write. Um, my first paper I turned in in ELA 101, I wrote, I was writing a, a, a piece and I would write words like the DA. And I would say things like what's happening in a, in a college uh, essay. And one day I just, you know, was on my knees crying to God, tears, literal tears in my eyes. I said, Lord, you have to teach me how to read. And as I started seeking God, I met this pastor through technology, Pastor Creflo Dollar. And I would write his sermons trying to seek God. And I would write his sermons over and over and over again. And as a result, I learned how to write an introduction, a thesis, a body, a conclusion. And through a lot of effort and through a lot of work, you know, I'm proud to say that I'm a doctor now and writing is no longer my Achilles heel. And it's, you know, through just hard work, perseverance, and through God's, you know, uh, blessing me, showed me how to do that. So I think one of the biggest issues for me as a black man was uh, my inability to read and write. Hi, my name is Shamari James, co-founder and CEO of Equity Now Inc., nonprofit charter management organization to Legends Charter School. And our mission, we believe in expediting change. So we provide as a charter management organization services to Legends Charter School. So every single kid in our school receives a stock portfolio. It's not just enough to grow your wealth, but you also need to sustain your wealth. So we're fundamentally focused on ensuring that we are seeing that there is competency exercise with social and emotional learning within our school and in the communities that we serve. So now that you've seen and heard about Equity Now Inc., I hope that you're wondering how can you help? Please visit us at www.equitynowinc.org to support us, to donate to us, to become a partner, or even collaborate. We're also on all social media at Equity Now Inc. We appreciate you. Look forward to working with you. 
We say it loud enough so that people can hear who we are. We are the McKinley Max. Mark Abraham has been principal since the end of the 2015-2016 school year. We were looked upon as, hey, we're that middle of the road school. So my biggest goal was saying, we don't want, no longer want to be a middle of the road school. We want to be one of the, the, the best. I got a shout out Buffalo Public Schools, um, uh, Westminster Community Charter School, uh, my, my school that, that kind of was my, well, really my, my springboard to open into my company is McKinley High School. Shout out to the Max. Uh, you know, Mac High has that uh, Mac High pride. So we, we, we're, we're, we're excited over there. Um, so what, what we see in the educational field, and, and when you ask that question, you say, well, you know, Dr. Abraham, you, 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 uh, went to a school that that had a, a a focus on you being coming a football player, but you still didn't have what you needed academically for success in the long run. What is your belief on that? Um, it's such a loaded question. That's just to try. Let, and I'm going to try to unpack it to the best of my ability. You know, I always tell people that you know we talk about young black and brown children what we oftentimes do is we put them in these 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 buckets or these lanes right like for young men every time we see a young man typically what we say is oh you look like a football player or you look like a basketball player or you look like a, a rapper and so then for our young black and brown men we're always trying to get them into a space of entertainment or get them into a space where they're having to um, you know, use their physicality to provide a service for, uh, you know, for, for white people, for black people, for brown people around the country. We, we, all, we rarely hear um, when we see a young black male that you say, you look like a judge, you look like a lawyer, you look like a, um, a, 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 a scientist, you look like a activists, right? We, we rarely say things like that. Um, and for me, what happened for me in the school system is because I provided a, a value to the school, because, because I provided, um, you know, finances to the school and, and, and the school can benefit from me and they saw my body and they saw my frame, it was more of a, we're going to push him along and the expectations were so low. You know, the expectations was, as long as I'm behaving, I'm not saying anything, I'm not being disruptive, I'm, I'm providing the school a, a benefit with playing football, we're gonna pass this young man along uh, so that they could be successful. They didn't challenge me academically. They didn't say, listen, you gotta write this paper, you gotta do this, you gotta do this. If I didn't do it, or I just gave bare minimum, nobody was checking uh for me to learn study skills and i i say this to educators around the country if you lower the bar you are telling these young people that you hate them when you lower the bar and lower expectation that is not a benefit to anybody you are setting them up for failure when you lower that bar academically and you do not provide a rigorous learning experience you are setting young black and brown men up for failure, poverty, and you're sending them out into the world ill-prepared. So what my work is, is we're challenging the system to raise expectations, but letting love be the foundation for how we raise expectation, right? Right, like so it's saying, I care about you, and so I'm raising the expectation so that you could be successful. And, and, and that's really the, 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 the basis for my work. So it's unfortunate and it's disheartening that I would walk out of high school illiterate and not have the skills necessary to be successful. Um, but even so, you know, when you play football and what people don't understand is that the, the, the team will set systems around you. They'll set systems around, give you all the tutors you need, all, all the academic services, you need, everything you need so that you, you could be successful. But unfortunately, if you're not an athlete and you're a black male, 
you don't get those same type of privileges and nor do you get the same type of system. If we if we set those type of systems up for all black males, the graduation rate wouldn't be so low. This is Dr. Mark Abraham, president and CEO from MEA Consultants. Listen, we are doing some phenomenal work with transforming the way leaders are performing in schools and in organizations. Currently, I'm the president and CEO of MEA Consulting Services, LLC. Um, I'm an educational consultant. We are one of the fastest growing consulting companies in the country. And what we do is we specialize in training school leaders to lead with a primary focus on increasing graduation rates for young men of color. It is our belief, it's my belief as a president that young men of color can graduate high school at 80, 90, and 100%. It's not happening currently in the country. Uh, fortunately, what we see for black males is that there's a graduation rate of about 59% nationally. And most urban cities where there is a high concentration for black males, um, the graduation rate significantly decreases, decreases. And in some areas, it's about 30% graduation rate for black males. Um, what got me into this, this field and got me into the profession um, is, is really my passion for uh, my culture. When I grew up, I, I had two best friends, um, Ty and Steven, and these were my boys. I mean, these are my guys. We did everything together. I mean, we played basketball together. We tried to holler at girls together. Um, we, we drink, we, we had dreams together, what we're gonna do. And these boys, I mean, I tell you, these were some of the best athletes I've ever seen in my life. And we went to elementary school together, middle school together, and we separated at high school. I went to high school in Deerfield Beach where right when I walked on the campus, they said, you're gonna be a division one football player. And everything they did and everything at that school led me to becoming a division one football player. Ty and Steve went to two different types of schools where there was a discipline first mentality, where if you mess up, you know, zero tolerance mentality, you're gonna get suspended. And they, like so many other black males, got suspended, got kicked out the school, find, found themselves in unsavory situations and went to jail and by the age of 25, they both were dead. And so my passion and what I know and what I knew as a young man getting into education experientially is that when black and brown young men do not graduate from high school, there's a higher chance that they're gonna be in prison and even worse, uh, killed. Um, I, was a, I worked in the community as a in-home therapist I have been a counselor, I have been a dean of students, I have been assistant principal, I was a high school principal, one of the most uh, successful high school principals at the school that I was at. But really my love for the community and my passion said, I gotta do more and I gotta help more. I gotta, I gotta get out of these four walls and I gotta help principals and administrators and schools around the country do this work because the research is showing that there's so many principals that care but just don't know what to do. So that's what I do now. I got three babies. You can't see them right now, but they are right there on the couch with me. And I'm not with their mom anymore. But I, and I'm not even from Buffalo, but I stayed in Buffalo because I knew what it felt like when my daddy got killed when I was 19. I had to, at the grave site, ask myself why this man did not love me or care for me enough to be in my life. So even though me and my children's mom did not, it didn't work out between us. And even though I don't have any family in Buffalo, I stayed because I wanted to break that generational curse. That my kids don't have to grow up and say, why didn't daddy love me? And I might not be the, the best dad, I might not, you know, you know, the Bill Cosby dad on television, but I'm present and I'm here and I'm breaking that curse to say, you you would never be able to say, why didn't my daddy love me? Cause you see me every single day. We're gonna have conversations. My mom, you actually is one of the most courageous people I've ever met. 
my mom is Haitian uh, from the Caribbean and she still believes in stuff like, you know, I don't care how big you is, I'm still your mama, I'll whoop you, you know, crazy stuff like that. I'm six four, 300, uh, 300 and something pounds, brother, you know what I mean? But I'm still afraid of this woman. And she just has a, a tenacity and, you know, my grand, my, 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 my kids be like, oh, that's Grand Mir, and she's just so wonderful. And I'm like, that lady hit me with a two by four. Um, and so very strong, very wise. And I was telling somebody this, man, I got a lot of degrees. I got a bachelor's degree, two bachelor's and a doctor degree. And when, when the world gets too heavy, I call my mama like, mama, what you, I need your ideas on how to, change people's paradigm and shift their thought process. And she got a high school diploma and she is like, oh baby, let me tell you how to do that, right? <laughs> so it's, you know, mothers, my mom is amazing and, I, and I'm thankful and, I, and I'm grateful that, you know, that she she has been uh, still alive and still in the land of the living and, and just been a blessing to me. Um, whenever I'm in my trouble or whenever I need wisdom, um, and every success that I've had, and I know people say it, like they say it, they'll, they'll do something, you know, devilish and then thank God for it. You know, you, you know, you see people, you know, rapping about the most demonic things and they get up and take it award and say, well, I just want to thank God as the, the, the leader of my life. They're like, Jesus, you know, but the decisions that I made as a leader, uh, decisions and the things that I've been able to implement um, and, and, and brother Dave to tell you, if I'm lying, I'm flying. I had, um, I would, I would every single day as a principal, I would get up and have my kids make a confession. Uh, and we would, we, we called it the Mac High Pledge. And I would have the kids empower themselves by speaking life into themselves. And everything that I did, it, it was a, a biblical principle to try to help people. The Bible says, life and death are in the power of the tongue and as a um as a man of faith um i use that in every area of my life am i perfect no i'm not perfect but god is my source and i pray and i seek him and i acknowledge him in all my ways and i and i try my best to um be who he has created me to be uh and that's a man of love and a man of um faith and a man that, you know, sometimes we have to also fight. And you say, well, Dr. Abraham said he, he about to put Vaseline in his face and be fighting in the streets, not like that. But I have to fight against thought process and, and, and racism. And, and that takes faith and courage to go into a system where black children are failing and I know it's racism and be able to call it out and look people in their face with a sense of righteous indignation to say, this is not fair and this shouldn't be happening and we're demanding a change. Uh, so my, my, my faith, brother, is, um, is everything. You know, my relationship with God is, you know, anytime I'm in trouble, anytime that I'm, and I, and I find myself back against the wall, know that my knees hit the ground. And all the degrees I have, no matter how many degrees I have, I, I believe that Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone to keep everything together. I've been blessed, man. I, I, I've, you know, probably the most significant award that I was accredited to was New York State Department of Education said, we want to examine the strategies you use at your school, to, that you took your graduation rate from here all the way up here, uh, but primarily for young men of color. And we want to come in and see exactly what you do and New York State sent um, uh, sent these consultants in my school and they walked around the school and, and one of the brothers said, man, I was here. I was here eight years ago. I was here 10 years ago because the school was one of the, was a failing school. 
and the things that I see now are completely different. And um, so that's one of the most significant awards. Uh, another award that I just won um, was by my college. It was, it was an award and, and St. John, shout out to St. John Fisher, Dr. Siaka, Dr. Owens, my whole uh, team over there. And um, my, my dissertation won an award for its scholarship, for having high scholarship. And, and again, my dissertation is on you know, what a successful strategy secondary principles use to increase graduation rates for black males. Again, my, my passion has been, has been laser focused for about 10, 15 years now. Um, you know, since my boys got killed, my, my passion has been focused. My, 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 my thought has been singular. How do I do this? How do I make this happen? And that's what I've been going after. And so now, you know, opening up my company, the, the, my, my end game, my end goal is to get the word out enough where, so if you're listening to me, the, the, the other bigger consulting companies, the other bigger uh, educational companies, I, I, I want you to jump on this bandwagon right now and, and start to say that black, young black men can graduate high school at 80, 90, and 100%. I just want you to say it. And then, and then come talk to me, and I can show you the systems to put in place, and then go put them in place so that we can get black men, young black men, that graduation rate and that gradu graduation gap can decrease. It go from fifty nine percent to eighty nine percent and to ninety percent nationally. So I will be doing this work, and I will be saying the same message over and over and over again, fellas, uh, until we see that graduation gap close. And then after that, I can go hang out on the beach and, you know, open up my food truck and uh, sit on the beach and talk to people. I might be a little bit older and that's just my, that's my end goal is just to be able to be on the beach somewhere and just talk to people, you know, just have conversations. But until then, uh, I will be, uh, preaching the good news of black men and young black boys and Latino boys can graduate the same as their white counterparts. And we have the strategies for them to do that. And it's possible. Just say it's possible. If you, if you listen to me, just, just, just say it with me. It's possible. Black males can graduate at 80, 90, hundred percent. Latino males can graduate at 80, 90 and hundred percent. It's possible. Um, I can be reached um, Instagram, uh, you know, Dr. Mark underscore Abraham and um, on Twitter, uh, Dr. Mark Abraham at Mark's Remarks uh, on LinkedIn, M-A-R-C-K-A-B-R-A-H-A-M. You can email me, uh, M-E-A-M-E-A -E consultants, LLC at gmail.com. Visit my website, M-E-A consultants llc.com i'm so accessible this is dr mark abraham and this is how i came up maria radio red rocks red this is addison henderson i'm danielle jackson it's ponzo houdini and this is how i came up I'm the career change guru, Sam Hill, and host of How I Came Up. This season, we have entertainers, entrepreneurs, and educators. Season three of How I Came Up is going to be extraordinary. Now let's get to it. This is How I Came Up.